I'm here today with Donna Foskin, Senior Scientist at the Institute of Environmental Science and Research in New Zealand. Donna is a caseworking scientist and she also serves as an expert witness. In addition, she's really been involved in validating new technologies that are used within ESR. So Donna, I understand that sexual assault cases that come into ESR can be analyzed using autosomal STRs or Y STRs. How do you make a decision on which one you would utilize? There are a number of factors that can influence our decision of which um, test to test a cell pull through, whether it's an autosomal test or a YSTR test. Uh, the case circumstances give us some information that can influence what our expectations are. Um, and these are what allegedly happened and the time delay between the sexual assault and the evidence collection. Um, initial screening tests can also give us some more information about whether a body fluid is present and can also influence um, what our expectations are again, um, and can also dictate what extraction type will process our sample through. For example, if sperm are present, we will process through a differential extraction. Uh, but after extraction, it is the quant result that is the first result that gives us actual data about how much DNA is present in the sample. And it is really this first result that changes our decision making from a best guess to um, what will actually give us a realistic result. And at ESR we use Quantifiler Trio and it measures the amount of total human DNA present and also measures the amount of male DNA present by specifically testing a male chromosome target. And from this you can get the amount of female to male DNA present in the sample. We found this female to male ratio really informative in assisting our expectations of which test will provide a successful result. So for cases where there's been recent sexual intercourse, uh, where sperm have been identified, we've found that we're, you're most likely going to get a successful profiling result using an autosomal kit. However, for the majority of intimate samples where the amount of female DNA is so much higher, we're better off going down the YSTR route just to target that male DNA only. So Donna, so what are the benefits that you found from using Y-Filer Plus kit in your analyses? Yeah, we've been achieving great success with the Y-Filer Plus test with samples where the amount of male DNA is extremely small. And um, this can be from just a grabbing case where uh, the amount of DNA is just such limited DNA has been transferred from such a brief contact and it's really pushing the limits of the sensitivities of our systems. And we've also achieved great success where the amount of male DNA present is extremely small in relation to the amount of female DNA present. So um, we're achieving full YSTR profiles from um, samples where the male DNA is in the picograms in the presence of over a thousand times more female DNA. So this has been really useful for our digital penetration cases or for when there's been a long time delay between the sexual assault and the evidence collection. So by having a test that can selectively target the male DNA only at these very sensitive levels, we are achieving results from samples and we are presenting this evidence in court on cases that hadn't been possible before. So we've talked a little bit about when you might use an autosomal STR test and when you might use your YSTR test. Are there times that you would actually use those together? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt of the merit of each of the separate tests that they provide by themselves as they each give us useful information. But we've had some interesting cases where by testing the samples through both an autosomal and a YSTR test, we've gained a greater appreciation for the case as a whole. An example of this would be when you might want to confirm the number of contributors in your sample. So let's say, for example, you have a low-level minor contribution in your sample and it looks like it originates from at least one male. Mm -hmm. But it's at such a level that there's some uncertainty to, as to how many contributors are actually in that minor. You can amp with a Y test just to confirm whether or not that minor contribution is from one male or not. Another example would be when you've tested different samples um, through the different kits for a particular case. Um, so just to give you an example, let's say there's been a sexual assault between a male and a female. Sexual intercourse has occurred and he's licked her neck, for example. 
uh, you might obtain a useful male DNA profile from the next sample, um, but you may have only obtained a useful YSTR profile from an intimate swab. Uh, we found it's a really good idea to test the next sample through YSTR test too, just to see if the same YSTR profile is obtained. Uh, the intimate swab is the more probative sample, and the, next, um, the profile from the neck could be from a legitimate contact. So by obtaining a YSTR profile from the neck sample too, you can link the donor of the profiles of the two samples together to see if, if they are the same um, before a suspect reference DNA sample is obtained. By bringing in the use of, of quantitation and, and specifically using Quantifilo Trio, has that really helped streamline your workflow so that you're able to make better decisions on which kits to process and which to stop? Yes and no. I, I, the first part of your uh, question was yes, it really has helped streamline. We're putting processes in place because it's giving that information, um, that data about how much DNA is present in a sample. The no part, which is also really good, is we don't stop any samples at ESR. We will AMP regardless because we are finding that we're having such great success with the y -Fila Plus test. Even if the quants are undetermined, we will try our best to see what results we can get because even one allele can exclude. Donna, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. It's a very exciting time to be in human identification. And to learn more, please visit us at thermofisher.com slash HID.